Welcome to Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the newspapers and review them. We'll try to do so as much as time would allow us. With me to do so this morning are two gentlemen uh, reviewing virtually. So we have Tubosung Akeju, who is a reputation manager. Good morning, Mr. Akeju. Good morning, Amaka. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. And also we have Lulu Elegbe, who is a political analyst. Good morning, Mr. Elegbe. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for asking. Good to have you both this morning. Thank right, you. we will begin with uh, the Punch newspaper. We'll have a couple of papers to review this morning. But already displayed there on the screen is the Punch newspaper. And this says from the Punch newspaper this morning. World Bank okays $70 million for Nigeria's power sector on page 30. And the Federal Executive Council approves 2.3 trillion Naira stimulus plan on page 30 as well. And Nigeria won't get into street fight against Ghana, presidency says on page 10. Wadume, I shot RT vehicle, it's some assaulted, admits a killer soldier. That's on page 9. Now, the big story for the Punch newspaper. The National Working Committee threatens to boycott NEC as Buhari backs uh, sacked Gaydom on page two. Law on side of ex-Deputy Secretary as acting National Chairman, according to the President. Disregard notice of meeting, Oshomole backed National Working Committee tells governors and others. Now, Plato called others APC to hold NEC meeting. Uh, Buhari urges attendance. Right, we have picture story of the flood, rain equals to flood in some parts of Nigeria. That looks like Lagos. All right, and then we also have alleged rape. Lawyers knock police for shielding the uh, That story continues to gain um, interest. The story is also on page 10. Trader arrested for jumping into Ogun River, released for psychiatric test. All right, on page five. He's alive, he or she is alive, that's the good news. Amotekun cause seizes 42 cows for destroying Ondo farmlands. Are they already operational? That story is on page 9. Buhari and others felicitate Sonwolu at 55, a governor bans birthday adverts. Really? Okay, good news. Lagos arranged counsel for killing Mesk MD's wife. Oh, who remember the story? That's uh, some months ago. The story is on page four. That's good development. Obaseki favored as 2,229 delegates elect Edo PDP candidates today. We see how that will play out. That's it. This and more you would find out inside the Punch newspaper. But very quickly, COVID updates. Nigeria is now at 22,020 cases confirmed. Uh, Nigeria has got 7,613 7, discharged, recovered, and so far 542 deaths recorded. Globally, we are at 9.5 million confirmed cases. All right, let me begin with you, Tsubosun. Which story is catching your attention? Um, I think it's the one from the release of money from um, government, the two point, I think, three trillion. Yes, you're correct. Um, that, that government is uh, releasing to help uh, fix the economic impact of COVID-19. Um, I think it's, I'm happy to hear that news, but I think uh, what is more important is to, for government and, you know, all the different parts of government to ensure that this does not just become one of those news items. It's, there's effective um, execution of of uh, of, the, of of this um, economic uh, recovery plan, as I might mean, just put it simply. Uh, you'd recall that um, at the beginning of uh, at some points during this COVID-19 pandemic issue, there was um, something from the CBN and for the uh, SMEs, and a lot of the SMEs had come out to say that the process for accessing that money was not transparent. And even at some point, there were conflict of communication from the CBN. Um, issues like that are indication that some of these ideas, while they might be very laudable, sometimes are not properly planned through. And if they are not properly thought through, uh, we would not be able to achieve you know, a good result from it. So it's, I'm happy to hear the 2.3 trillion move. 
but more importantly is that let's ensure that the money is used in ways that would really have significant impact you know the economy the minister of finance had said in that news that oh and they're going to you know there are some changes that will happen to procurement there will be encouragement to use more nigerian uh product and, and all of that you know um the plan looks good but um execution is everything after things like this so execution is key all right to mr legbe now your thoughts yeah, I think I agree with my friend there. I think um, beyond that, for me, the key thing is transparency. Um, because of the massive trust deficit that we have um, between the people and the government in the country, when you hear stories like this, good as they are, there is always that issue of, is the money going to be used for what, it, what it's been earmarked to be used for? Oh, yeah. And will there be transparency in either the disbursement or execution of um, whatever needs to be executed. So I think that's the key thing. If those two things can be resolved, then I think we're in a good place. Um, I'm not the most optimistic when it comes to things like this because of our track record on, on these sorts of things, but it would be good to be proven wrong for once. Right. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Anyways, that's why we found ourselves in mm. this country. All right. I'll still stay on you, uh, Mr. Legbert, to say pick another story aside of that so we can proceed. Um, I, I think the, key, the main issue is this APC... <laughs> Um, APC, I'm not even sure what to call it, whether it's a crisis, whether it's a or fight, drama. I'm really not sure what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's so much confusion as to what's going on, who is the, I mean, different people coming up saying they're the, they're the chairman. They, obviously, the president said yesterday that he's recognized uh, Mr. Giadom as the acting national chairman which sort of puts a new spin on the whole thing um, because the National Working Committee of the APC is obviously back in someone else. Um, he's called a meeting, um, Gerdas, Mr. Gerdom, he's called a meeting for today, which the president has said he's going to attend. The National Working Committee said they are not going to attend. So it's a mess. The long, to the long story short is that it's a mess. And that's, that obviously starts to have impact um, on the two key elections happening in the next few months, Edo State and Undo State. Um, Edo State, obviously, the governor's moved to a new party. Um, there's been a PC nominee, um, I think, yesterday. And in Undo State, the, um, obviously, the deputy governor has left the party. Um, INEC was sent, uh, I think, a notice yesterday. They rejected. Again, that could have impact. So it's... Uh, it, it's a mess. Mm. I hope they clear it up quickly because at the end of the day, um, elections are about about uh, making lives of the people better. So if I, I hope that these distractions will not lead to um, will not lead to other things in the states because at the end of the day, it's the people that matter. The people are the ones going to go out to vote. So mm -hmm. whatever is going on with, with the politicians, they need to resolve these things very quickly. Otherwise, we get into a place where we're busy arguing about personalities and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And the people ultimately will be the ones to lose out. So that's, that's my biggest worry. All right. All right, Superson, let me just quickly get your thoughts on Nigeria won't get into street fights against Ghana, according to the presidency. That's uh, following the story of the demolition of Nigerian High Commission in Accra. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a very funny headline there. Yes. I think what uh, the presidency was actually reacting to directly was the retaliation that the uh, Speaker of the House had um, uh, reportedly requested for. Uh, despite the fact that the president of Ghana um, has apologized to um, President Buhari about the issue. And that's what the president the presidency is reacting to, saying that we're not going to go and retaliate because it, um, while what happened was, you know, very, very, very disrespectful to the Nigeria people, mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria as a nation, um, the, what, the, the, the issue seemed to be shredded in some... Um, some, some, that there, there's this fault and um, um, sharing, uh, if you allow me to say that, you know. And the president of Ghana said he was going to investigate and see how, you know, it even degenerated to that point. 
So um, I don't think that what we need right now is a, is there any hostile reaction between Nigeria and Ghana, right. more especially when uh, the president of Ghana has apologized. Okay. All right. We'll move on very quickly in the interest of time to the Nation newspaper. It would be displayed on the screen for you. But before that happens, I'll begin to read out the headlines. Oh, already displayed. Thank you. FEC approves 2.3. Okay, stimulus plan for economic um, for the economy uh, to cushion COVID-19 effect. We already had that conversation. Obaseki Imaswagbon battle for Edo PDP ticket, and then the big story there. Sagei to Buhari don't attend Yadom led neck meeting. We'll see what happens. Police parade women who uh, hid arms in rice bags. Wow, that story is on page three. And then we have PA, World Bank OKs 750 million IDA credits for Nigeria. Good news. All right, and then we have the global figures on COVID-19. Now to we'll hand over to uh, Mr. Elegbe. What's your thoughts? Which one do you want to begin with from the Nation newspaper? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, um, I think it's the, the World Bank story, I think, because it comes back to what we were saying earlier about transparency and um, and how funds are spent. The, I think the good thing about the, the good thing about generally World Bank or um, donor or other donor agency funds is that certain conditions are always tied to those funds. So if they say that, um, for example, if they say Nigeria is being given $10 million, for example, um, I think people tend to think we just get a check for $10 million and that's it. No, it doesn't happen that way. Um, we, the, Like I said, conditions are tight. It's the money is given in tranches. When you meet certain conditions, then the next set of funds are released. And the reason I, I, talk, I wanted to talk on this story is it would be good if we could if we could have a similar um, a similar structure in terms of how we deal with funds in Nigeria, right. and we're not just releasing funds for the sake of it. Where everything is tied to certain conditions, the next tranche won't be released until certain conditions are met. And if we're able to do things that way, then we'll start to see a bit more transparency and sanity in terms of how we how government um, sorry public funds are spent in Nigeria making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be used for, you know, being used for what they're supposed to be used for. And everyone's well aware, everyone can see how it's been spent and what it's been spent on. So hopefully that's what happens here. But I think when the world and these other agencies are involved, we tend to see a bit more sanity in terms of how these, um, these things are carried out. All right, let's uh, talk to um, if I might. Mr. Akejo now. Uh, and you didn't have the, yes. the chance to so, talk about the police. Do you want to respond to this too? Yes, um, okay. the, the news about the funding for the power sector is another exciting one. Um, like I've said on the program before, I believe that um, the, the Nigerian power sector has a lot and a lot of liquidity issue uh, and uh, is one of the layers of the onion. <laughs> I believe that the power problem in the power sector is like a, a layer onions and liquidity is one of the problems. Um, I believe that this funding is very good but it's important to say that this funding alone will not um, solve the problem of the power sector if certain things are not done to fix the liquidity issue and some of the other problems that we have in the power sector. Um, this funding will inject about um, I think over 200 uh, billion into that sector but already the problem, even the, the, the debt in that sector is way, way more than that as it is at the moment. Yeah. And um, one of the things that, you know, has to be done, uh, this the, the tariff policy in that sector has to be carefully looked into and taken care of. We also, we don't want to punish the poor, but at the same time, we also understand that if we look at it, you know, very carefully, the consumption pattern, the poor are not consuming as much as the rich. So we have to look at these things properly and, you know, ensure that we don't get this money from the World Bank and because we've not fixed things like our tariff structure and then we waste this money technically because, you know, the generations to come will have to pay for this money. Or we will pay for it, part of it, and the generations to come 
we pay for it. So I just hope that getting this money from First Bank uh, will, uh, from one bank rather, <laughs> will help us, you know, and would, uh, to also look at the other problem and not just inject this money and then not get the result that we want from uh, out of the power sector. All right. I, I will say we'll move away from the nation newspaper. In the interest of time, we have just less than eight minutes before the next uh, news bulletin begins. Let's take a look at Tribune, uh, what they've got to say. I think there are just a few stories that are different from what the other uh, dailies have talked about again. So we'll just pick the stories that... Um, We've not talked about court clears way for Basaki to participate in PDP primary. Uh, 2229 delegates to decide. Anxiety over Ondo primary as INEC rejects a National Working Committee's notice. Uh, lawyers disagree over Iseyamu's fate. Party defies Fayemi's directive, passes votes of confidence. All right, just your thoughts, uh, Lulu, on any of this matter, and then we'll take one more from. Um, Tsubosun and then call it a wrap. Lulu. Okay, um, so I think, I think the, again, the natural place is what's going on in terms of the politics around the country. Um, obviously, it's coming up to the elections in Ondo and Edo states, including the, um, the PDP primaries in Edo that held, sorry, the APC primaries, rather, in Edo that held, I think it was yesterday and the upcoming um, Ondo, um, Ondo State primaries as well. So it's getting very complicated. Um, INEC rejected the notice from Ondo State. I think they have a deadline of 28th of June to, um, to send the names of um, the participants to INEC. Now, if that doesn't happen because of all these issues around who exactly is the natural, who exactly is the chairman, who exactly is the National Working Committee, then Ondo State could be in the same position. I think it was Zamfara was in uh, sometime last year where they didn't have a candidate. Um, so that's my fear for. I'm from Ondo State, so that's what uh, that's what worries me about it. Um, it's. it's yeah, it's, it's quite, to be honest, it's, it's quite worrying because you shouldn't, things should never have get to, gotten to this point. Um, the, I mean, a, de a deputy governor resigning, these things happen, but there should have been other ways to handle these things. Um, not, not from, not, not necessarily from within Ondo State, but within the APC, because that's where, that's where the genesis of a lot of these issues come from. Um, PDP, again, it's a bit complicated with uh, Governor Basek in Edo State. Um, there's a law, there's a lawsuit saying he can contest. There's another lawsuit saying he cannot contest. So it's again, it just I think it just points to the fact that right now our policy mess. That's that's what it boils down to, because these are the two major opposition parties. And when you find politicians basically cross capitating from APC to PDP, and it's I don't know, it's it's a it's a shame that it's come to this, like I keep saying, because again, to go back to what happened in Ondo State, um, I think Governor Akiri Dolu has gotten a lot of criticism um, in terms of how this thing has been handled. But to be honest, I wouldn't blame him because you you can't be a deputy governor, resign from the party. I mean, he wasn't appointed deputy governor; he was elected on the platform of. So when you leave that party and decide to go to the opposition party just before an election and you and then you you feel like everything else should be normal, it can't be normal. It's not possible. Let's be honest with ourselves. Because where, where you have your deputy governor being a member of the main opposition party to to um, to get rid of that particular government, then there's no way things can be normal. So I'm not sure where why um Kredoli is being criticized that much because I'm not sure I'm, anyone that I think anyone that says they wouldn't do the same in the shoes is either naive or lying is one of the two as I'm concerned but again it, it's all a point regardless of what anyone feels about it mm -hmm. it's all a point that to the messy the messy situation of our politics right. at the moment. It's not just APC, it's APC, it's PDP, it's all the parties. That's right. All right, so Boston, let's get your thoughts very quickly and then wrap. Um, if if, if uh, I could just quickly add to that, yeah. I'd say that um, I'm not completely surprised, you know, with regards to what's happening in the APC. Uh, and because it's, um, 
um, an indication this is what happens when there are no strong ideologies. And you'd remember how the APC came together in 2015 was a combination of parties, majorly CPC and uh, I think AC then. And uh, what we are seeing now is because there is no concrete ideology in both the two main parties in Nigeria, it's very easy for people to move from one to other because there's no strong, you know, identity. And I think that if there's any lesson to learn from this is the fact that our democracy now has to start to look at, you know, strong party ideology so that we don't continue to have this mess. Because what is happening in Odo and Edo state is a very strong recipe for crisis in our quality. And we really, really don't want that. All right. Gentlemen, uh, Tsubosun Akeju, Reputation Manager and Policy Analyst, Lulu Elegbe, thank you so very much for joining me and being with me this morning. And keep staying safe out there. Thank you, you too. Much. Thank you very much, Michael. Right, and that's how we call it a wrap on this program. Remember, the time is 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa, Monday to Friday. My name is Amaka Okui.